Good morning, gentlemen. Hey, Rudy. Hey, Rudy. Rudy. Are the ladies here yet? Not yet. Okay. I've got a couple things I need to talk over with all of you. Um, I met with Mr. Wheeler late yesterday, and we just talked about the shows we've got planned for the next few weeks. Is he okay with what we got lined up? Yeah. No, he likes the way things are going. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing Seth this weekend. Oh, boy. <laughs> Nervous time. <laughs> now, Mr. Wheeler didn't see Seth in last week's show? No, he was out of town, but he'll be here this week. Like I said, it's nervous time. Seth, there's no reason to be nervous. First of all, you did a great job in last weekend's show. Yes, you did. And secondly, which could be just as important as the first reason that I just stated, did you see all of the mistakes Gates made in last week's show? That should be enough to take away any nervousness that you might have. Listen to him. Seth, if it wasn't for me carrying Travis in this uh, show... No, 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 Seth, if it wasn't for me carrying Gates in this Seth, show... Seth, don't listen to him. All right, you two. I'm glad you can both carry each other in the show, aren't we, Seth? <laughs> Seth, have you met Mr. Wheeler yet? Uh, yeah, I met him once before my brother left. We got together one night for dinner. Oh, that's good. I also talked to Mr. Wheeler about vacation schedules. <laughs> He's all but insisting I take a week off. He says I need a little break. Yeah, right, Rudy. You haven't had a vacation since we started. I hadn't noticed. <laughs> yeah, but everybody needs a little break. Yeah, but if you take it, there might be a little problemo. Who's gonna do the lighting for the shows when you're gone? Yeah, that's what we're trying to figure out. Well, maybe there's somebody at the university who can help. Yeah, we thought of that. I'm gonna call some of my old professors this morning and see if they'd be willing to come over and chip in. Do you have any days set for your vacation? Not yet. Mr. Wheeler wants it to be right away. I told him I'd rather wait till he gets somebody to help out while I'm gone. Uh, there's no hurry. Do you have any ideas where you wanna go? I'll tell you where he wants to go. He wants to go overseas. That'd be nice. Well, I'd like to recommend Australia, mate. It's a really neat place I got there. You'd like it. <laughs> Actually, if I'd go anywhere, it'd be to see my folks. I haven't seen them in a while. Well, unless they've come to visit you, it's been about a year because you've been here that long. Yeah, my dad's not able to get around so much anymore, so they can't really come up here. I need to go down there. Where do they live? Tampa. I was born there. They moved to California when I was 10, and then when I graduated college, they went back to Florida. Oh, Rudy, that's pretty bad. I mean, you went from sunshine to sunshine, <laughs> and then back to sunshine again. <laughs> you must have had a really rough upbringing. <laughs> so what do you want to do with all of this? I'm just going to put this on Travis's desk. We can see if he'll set it up for us. So what are we going to do for our scene? I don't know. I thought you had an idea. Oh, I don't have an idea. All I heard was Rudy asking us to do a scene in the beauty salon. I thought you had an idea. Not me. I don't have an idea. So what are we going to do for our scene? I don't know. We'll have to think of something. OK. A piece of cake. Who's got a piece of cake? No, Travis, we don't have any cake. What, did Gates get to it before I did? No, Travis, it's just an expression. We don't have cake. Well, just as well. I don't think I need to eat it anyway. Hey, Travis, would you set this up for us? Sure. What scene are you guys working on? We don't know yet. No idea yet. Then why did you get this out if you don't have an idea? Because Rudy wants us to do a scene in the beauty salon, and we thought the other one had an idea. And neither of you do. Right. All right, well, I think I've got an idea for you. OK. Since this week's theme is waiting on God, why don't you two do a scene about waiting on God, hmm? Mm. Travis, that is brilliant. Mm. Why didn't we think of that? You know, Travis, that's why I like you. You're so helpful at times. Well, you know, what can I say? I do what I can. Hi, Rudy. Hey, Joanna. Here is the lineup for this week's show. OK. The only thing missing there is a scene the girls are working on. They don't know what they're doing yet. This is your beauty salon. Well, it's set there, but they haven't written the scene yet. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> you doing okay? Yeah, I'm just not having any success finding somebody to help out with the show. Oh, did you try the university? Yeah, I talked to two of my professors there. They'd both love to help, but they just don't have the time. They've got a play starting up, rehearsals every night. Mm -hmm. One's directing, one's doing set design. Uh, what about a grad student? Well, one of the profs recommended a guy. I called him, but it's the same problem. He just doesn't have the time. There's got to be somebody. I told Mr. Wheeler I don't really need a vacation. Rudy, everybody needs a break, including you. Well, he wants me to take it right away. He's right. I mean, you haven't seen your parents for, like, a year or more. I know. I want to see them. I need to. Well, keep working on it. I will, but no rush. <laughs> Thanks, Joanna. Take care.
Here you go, Trev. The final version of our scene. You and Seth and I go on a hunting trip, a big storm comes up, and we are in dire straits. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Yeah, we just need to come up with some sort of a set, though. Well, you said it takes place in a barn, right? Yeah, or something like that. Well, I just thought I'd take a few pieces of wood and put them on the stage, you know, give it some sort of a suggestion. But I'll, I'll put something together for you, maybe a bell of hay or something. All right. Look, I talked to Seth, and we're going to work on this just after lunch. You know, I always work better on a full stomach. But you always have. What was that? Well, I just said you always have worked better on a full stomach. I understand. I thought that's what you said. Hey, Rudy, we're out of here. Hey. Yeah, we're going to call it a day. Guys called it a day about a half hour ago. <laughs> hmm, well, that's because their scenes are ready and we are not. We're still working on it. Yeah, we were actually trying to learn our lines for the other scenes in between writing something for the beauty parlor. Which we didn't. But tomorrow's a new day, Rudy, and we're going to come in bright and early and come up with something. We hope. <laughs> You'll do fine. Hey, you know what? It's time for you to get out of here, too. Don't stay here all night. I won't. I've just got to finish up my lighting plan, so. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Be ready. Bye. Seventh Street. Hi, Mom. Well, what's the matter? What's wrong? I is he all right? Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, I can leave first thing in the morning. Okay. Um, I, I love you. Uh, tell Dad that that I love him. I'll um, I'll, I'll get there as soon as I can. Okay. Okay, lo love you too. All right, bye. Morning, everybody. Hi, Hi guys. Hey, Travis. Ladies and gentlemen. What's going on? Rudy around? No, I haven't seen him. Hey, Travis, did you put together our beauty salon thingy? Uh, yes, Andy, I put your little thingy together. As a matter of fact, it's right over there. Oh, I didn't see it. Thanks. You're welcome. Did you ladies come up with a scene yet? As a matter of fact, we haven't. But we're planning on working on something this morning, and Lord willing, have something by today. Absolutely. Lord willing, of course. Of course. But with the way the ideas are flowing, it's probably going to be a really short scene. But hopefully sweet. Hmm, short? And sweet. Just like Andy. Hey, Gates, I'm not sure. Well, just how tall are you? I'm five foot two. Oh, five foot two. Well, that's that, that's not short. I mean, I know a lot of very famous people who are just five foot two. Uh, uh, Robert Donnelly, um, uh, John Palmer, Sharon Wyckoff. They were all five foot two. Gates, who is Robert Dunn, John whatever, and Sharon what's her name? Dunn Lee. Robert Dunley, John Palmer, Sharon Wyckoff. And just like I said, they were very famous people who were all five foot two. Very famous people. Has anybody else heard of these people? I haven't. Me either. Well, that's because you guys live a sheltered life. Gates, who are these people? Well, Robert Dunley was the leading scorer in our high school basketball conference. And he was just five foot two. John Palmer rushed for 300 yards one game for our high school football team. And he was just five foot two. And Sharon Wyckoff set the record for the mile run for the state. And she was just five foot two. Like I said, some very famous people. Gates. What do you mean, Gates? These are famous people from my neck of the woods. And now that I'm in this neck of the woods, Andy Ramsey, who is five foot two, is famous to me also. Well, thank you so much, Gates. I am so happy to be in the company of a runner, a football player, and a basketball shooter. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hey, Joanna. Hey. Uh, I got some sad news for you. What happened? Rudy got a phone call from his mother last night, and he left for Tampa this morning. His father had a stroke yesterday. Oh, no. 
Yeah, he found out about it after you all left last night. His mom said that he should get there as soon as possible. So he took the first flight out this morning. Well, that's good. Well, we need to be sure to pray for Rudy. Have you heard anything else? No, he said he was going to call us later when he got there. I hope his dad's going to be all right. Yeah, me too. From the way Rudy was talking, it sounds pretty serious. He said he was trying to get there in time. Sorry to hear that. And also, no Rudy means no show. Well, Mr. Wheeler's trying to find someone to help us with the show this week. He doesn't want to cancel it. Well, we can't do the show without Rudy. He knows we need someone, and he's working on it this morning. He wants you all to continue to rehearse your scenes like normal and try and get everything ready. He's going to call us in a little while. Then who was it that turned on the stage lights this morning? Rudy did. He said he was going to stop by here on his way to the airport. I don't know the first thing about that light board. Nor I. Don't look at me. Well, let's just hope Mr. Wheeler finds someone. It's getting pretty bad out there. Yeah, really bad. Yeah, I know. We should go ahead and leave them before it gets any worse. Sounds like it's already gotten worse. I knew we should have left earlier. I mean, I want to see my wife and kids. Yeah, us too. But you heard the weather report. Severe thunderstorms and tornadoes everywhere. Look, we need to just stay put and wait it out. Yeah, what if it doesn't let us? What do you mean? I mean, what if the storms keep getting closer? I mean, if a tornado gets anywhere near us, we're like sitting ducks. And we have no cover. I mean, this old barn is like a tin can. You know he's right? Well, I'm not moving. I don't think you guys should either. You know, we need some kind of effect, like lightning coming through the window or something that's more life-threatening. Well, what do you want us to do? Rudy's not here to set it up, and Mr. Wheeler hasn't hired anybody to help us yet. Well, maybe we should just postpone the idea for another show. Uh, Gates, the show is in one day, and this is the closing scene. I don't think so. We just have to make the scene work. But it would work a whole lot better with that lightning effect. Well, you can hear the wind, the rain, and the thunder. Yeah, but we need the lightning, too. Well, we may not get that, so we just have to do the best we can with this scene. I hear you. Look, you guys hungry? I'm ready to break for lunch. <laughs> you always want to break for lunch. <laughs> Very funny. But I am hungry, and I am not going to reply to that statement. I'm heading straight for that door. You coming, Seth? Uh, no, I actually brought a sandwich today, so I'm just going to hang out here. How about you, Trev? Yeah, right behind you. All right, Seth, we're going to finish the scene when we come back. See you, Seth. See you, guys. So I'm cutting your hair, and we need to do something about waiting on God. I have an idea. Okay, what? We could talk about how hard it is to wait on God because you don't feel like he's gonna come through for you. Okay. So what situation do we use? I don't know. You know, it seems like that. A lot of people don't think that God's gonna come through for them. Maybe I know why. Well, you heard the weather report. Severe thunderstorms, tornadoes everywhere. I think we should stay put, wait it out. What if it doesn't let us? What do you mean? I mean, what if the storms keep getting closer? If a tornado gets anywhere near us, I mean, we're like sitting ducks. And we have no cover. I mean, this old barn is like a tin can. You know he's right? Well, I'm not moving. I don't think you guys should move either. Well, I'm thinking about giving it a try. I mean, I want to see my wife and kids. I want to make sure they're okay. Try calling them again. Well, I still get no signal. Yeah, me either. But I still think we should stay put. I mean, listen to that thunder. You see? We need a flash of lightning right before that thunder. Gage, you've told us that before, and I told you Rudy's not here now, and Rudy's the lighting director. Wait a minute, Travis. <clears throat> you mean something like this? Yes, exactly. Seth, how'd you do that? Hold on. Seth, you know how to run that board? Well, not this particular model, but I've run lighting boards before. Wait a minute. Didn't Jamie mention something to us about Seth running lighting before? Did you, Seth? 
Well, I studied lighting in college. But didn't you do lighting at a show in California? Yeah, the last one I did. Well, Seth, why you didn't speak up earlier? Well, look, I'm nowhere as good as Rudy. I mean, he's the pro at this stuff. I'm amateur at best. Well, amateur at best is better than what we have now. Seth, you hired. Look, Seth, do you think you can light this week's show? I don't know. Now, come on, Seth, now seriously, don't think you're being prideful or anything. Can you do it? I think I could do it good enough. Well, let's call Mr. Wheeler, tell him to search us off. We found our man. <laughs> you know, I've been praying for this particular thing to happen for so long, but it's like God doesn't even hear me. Oh, he hears you. He's got great hearing. Well, then I think his eyesight must be going a little, because if he's taken a look at my situation lately, he'd better look again. Nope. Perfect vision. It's 2020. Then why doesn't he answer my prayer? I mean, I'm really trying to follow him and obey his word. It's good to hear that. I'm sure you are. Then why doesn't he answer me? To be honest, I'm starting to lose faith in believing that he's even there. Don't lose faith. After all, there's only three answers to any prayer. Three? I thought there were only two. No, there's three. Well, there's yes and no. What's the other answer, maybe? No, wait. Wait? Yes. Wait. Sometimes God delays answering our prayers. We might take that delay as a no, when in reality, it may be a yes that just hasn't come yet. And just because God doesn't answer your prayer exactly the way you're hoping, doesn't mean he won't. Sometimes, many times, God needs us to wait longer, which is hard. Very hard. And if God answered our prayers exactly the way we wanted him to every time, well, then we'd be God, and he'd be our servant. He'd be like a genie in a bottle. You're right. Don't lose faith. God hears our prayers. He answers them. Yes. No. Wait. We just have to leave the answer and the timing to him. Look, guys, like I said, I am not moving. I don't think either of you should move either. So what do we do? Look, man, I don't want to just sit here and die. I mean, if we stay here any longer, we're not going to make it out of this storm. Look, if we go out there, we are definitely not going to make it. Now, we need to just sit here and trust the Lord. That is easy to say. When you look around, it's really bad out there. Listen, it was bad for the disciples the night that they sailed with Jesus. What are you talking about? It's the Bible. In Mark chapter 4, Jesus said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. So they all got in the boat and they set sail. Now the weather was good when they started, but then a big storm arose. Now during this, Jesus was asleep in the boat. Now, the storm got worse and his disciples got very scared. So they woke Jesus up and said, don't you care that we're going to die? And Jesus rebuked them and said, oh yeah, of little faith. Then he calmed the sea, and they were amazed. So Jesus performed a miracle. Now wait a minute, there's more to the story if you look a little bit deeper. I mean, just think about the situation they were faced with. I mean, they had a legitimate claim. These were fishermen who had seen all types of weather and rough water conditions. And this had to be a pretty bad storm for them to think that they were gonna die. So Jesus stood, calm the sea. They were totally amazed. And we should be too. So what's the point of the story? I mean, how does it relate to us? It relates perfectly to us. All the disciples had to do was to hear what Jesus said to them when they got on the boat. He said, let us go over to the other side. And guess what? The Bible says he got them to the other side. Now, Jesus never said that this would be a smooth ride. And if we believe by faith, Jesus will see us through this storm. Remember what he said to the disciples, O ye of little faith. Listen. 
I don't hear anything. That's right. Hey, maybe the storm's over. I think it is. You know what, guys? I think Jesus just calmed the sea for us. You know, guys, I'll be the first to admit, I did not think we could pull that off without Rudy. Well, and I'll be the first to admit, I never realized how important that guy was to the show until tonight. I mean, I knew he was important, but now I know how important. Huh? I agree. And Seth, you did a great job filling in for him. You sure did. Oh, well, thanks, but I am definitely no Rudy. And don't anybody think I am. Plus, Kelly helped out. Yeah, Kelly, you did really well with that lightning effect. Oh, I just did what Seth showed me to do. Well, whatever he told you to do worked, so thank the Lord for both of you. You know, with Rudy, he holds everything together. And I got confidence to know that all the lighting cues and all the sound cues would be right. Yeah, everything seemed to hit right tonight. Yeah, it sure did. You pulled it off, my man. Yeah, well, thanks. That's because we simplified everything for me, so... Plus, Rudy had most of it set up before he went, so... I'm just glad that everything worked out okay. Well, it did. Uh, I'll get it. Seventh Street Theater. Rudy. Hey, we've been thinking about you. How are you doing? How's your dad? I'm so sorry. Of course, I'll tell them. It was fine, Rudy. Everything came together. We love you, Rudy. We miss you. Okay. Bye. What is it, Kelly? It's Rudy. Um, his dad went to be with the Lord about an hour ago. Said he got a chance to talk to him and be with him. Is Rudy okay? He's sad. He said his father was a true Christian. So uh, he knows where he is right now. Well, you know, the Bible says that when a Christian dies, he goes straight into the presence of the Lord. We should pray for Rudy. Yeah. Gates, you want to lead? Sure. Our Heavenly Father, we pray for our friend and brother. And we ask you, Lord, to, to be with him and his family during this time. And Lord, please comfort Rudy as only you can. And Lord, we even thank you for the, for the somber moment that you've given us because it's making us think about you and about our own destination. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, Rudy's dad went to the other side tonight. And just like Jesus got his disciples to the other side, he got Rudy's dad there too.